Welcome back once again to another Frame Voyager video where we're gonna be busting 23 cinematography and movie myths, so let's go. Number one, a real director should know how to do everyone's job on set. I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here and say that Peter Jackson probably doesn't know how to be a stunt coordinator, just like Spielberg probably doesn't know how to find the movie section on Netflix. While having a background in some aspects of production work is helpful, it's not necessary to know every job on set. That's why you hire people who are good at their jobs so you can focus on what you do best. Out! Disney kept everyone in Hollywood from hiring the voice actress Adriana Casalotti, who played Snow White to keep the illusion that the character was real. Disney, at this time, in 1937, did not actually credit their voice actors for movies, and they wouldn't until 1943, and did in fact want to keep the idea alive that their animated characters were real. This played into many believing that Walt Disney was blacklisting her in the industry. But in reality, they did not keep her from other roles as she was in The Wizard of Oz and It's a Wonderful Life and would go on to receive an award from Disney in 1994. And number three, most of the budget goes to camera and lighting for movies. Even on lower budget films, this is rarely the case as the most expensive aspect for these smaller films tends to be post-production work. And as the film budget grows, the percentage of the budget for lights and cameras actually shrinks quite a bit. More is spent statistically, according to StephenFollows.com, on special effects, location, the art department, the cast, and travel all individually, then cameras and lighting. Number four, Steven Spielberg began his career by sneaking into Universal, finding an empty office, and just started working. While it's true he did have to sneak past the guards, that's just because they hadn't sorted out a pass for him to be there yet. But his father had set up a meeting for him with the editorial supervisor, Chuck Silvers, who would go on to help him get an internship at Universal. Number five, only the best movie scripts become movies. Anyone who believes this must be the genius behind releasing Morbius, not once, but twice, to theaters. I'm just kidding, it's Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. Number six, you don't need social media as a filmmaker. At the end of the day, as much as filmmaking is an art, it's also a business. And just like a musician who's the best that's ever played, if you don't learn how to promote your art or yourself and reach people where they're at, you'll be hard pressed to find an audience. You need to see social media for the tool it is and the ability to be able to interact with other creatives and people who might be able to help you out later on or even work with you. Number seven, the higher the frame rate, the better the footage. So you're telling me that The Hobbit I think 48 frames gives you a smoothness and a, and a sort of gentleness on the eyes is a cinematic masterpiece. Number eight, actress Shirley Eaton died from being painted in gold for the movie Goldfinger. This odd pre-internet rumor came to be because the actress actually disappeared from the public spotlight for years after making this movie, causing people to think she died from asphyxiation from being painted. She, in fact, is still alive and actually appeared on a Mythbusters episode. Weird rumor. Number nine, PPI and DPI are the same thing. PPI stands for pixels per inch, or also known as pixel density, and represents the resolution of digital images. DPI is dots per inch that is known more as a print resolution and is the number of ink dots a printer can print per square inch. Number 10, audiences fled during the first screening of a train arriving at the station because it was so realistic. This is also believed to be the first film ever exhibited. So this is a bonus two in one myth. Contrary to popular belief, this was not the first film ever exhibited as it was not part of the 10 film screenings that the Lumiere brothers, some of the first filmmakers in history had for their audience. Workers leaving the Lumiere factory was actually the first film. So forgive us if we question if the rest of the myth is true. Number 11, film school is expensive. I've Obviously, as in any other educational situation, if you go to more prestigious schools, that cost will be more expensive. Take for example, if you go to Full Sail, where it could cost you up to $40,000 a year to attend. But if you attended a film school at an in-state college or university or attend online classes, you can find much cheaper alternatives than the top film schools, and they pay the same as any normal college degree. Though you personally have to weigh the pros and cons and determine if it's the right fit for you and whether or not you should just go look for internship opportunities instead. Number 12. Cinematographers make bad directors. Whoever created this myth never has had to stay calm, keep clients or actors happy, and come up with creative solutions to massive problems, all while every piece of gear and their backups are malfunctioning and you're having a mini meltdown internally, but you still keep the atmosphere fun. Cinematographers or videographers, whatever environment they're in, from making movies to corporate gigs, are constantly having to think on their feet and adjust. I think cinematographers
cinematographers make fine directors. In fact, many times cinematographers are the second in command on sets. Most directors, even if they did not become cinematographers, got started with a camera in their hands making something. Alfonso Cuaron even won an Oscar in 2018 for best cinematography in the film Roma, when Emmanuel Lubezki couldn't make it as scheduled to help film it. Number 13, movies always need movie stars and famous people if you want to sell your movie. May I introduce you to Star Wars? <laughs> maybe almost all of them. Slumdog Millionaire, X-Men, Jurassic Park with Sam Neill. I, yeah, a lot of the best movies started with relatively little known actors, and it seems more often than not lately that movies to bomb the hardest are the ones with well-known actors. Even Tom Cruise couldn't save the Mummy reboot from failure. Number 14, you have to wait 24 hours before reporting a person missing. Yeah, that's not true. If someone is actually missing and you have a legitimate concern, report it as soon as possible. Number 15, asteroid belts are densely crowded. When you hear about asteroid belts, the first thing your mind probably goes to is Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, where Han Solo is weaving in and out between asteroids trying to not get hit by them. While movies often portray breathtaking scenes of flight through tightly packed asteroid belts, in reality, there are actually many miles of vacuum between asteroids in a real life asteroid belt. Number 16, you need the best camera to make a movie. This myth really started from early filmmaking when high-end cameras and the processes and equipment needed to even use them properly were so out of reach for most consumers, the filmmaking process almost seemed like magic. But fast forward to right before the turn of the century and you have a film that made over $248 million, primarily filmed with an RCA high eight camcorder. The better question one should ask is not, is this the best camera? but is this the best camera for the film I'm trying to make? It would have looked a bit ridiculous for a bunch of student filmmakers to be carrying around a 35 millimeter Aeriflex 435E, the film camera used for The Phantom Menace that same year to film the Blair Witch Project. The best cinematographers will test out a variety of cameras and lenses to find the style and feel that best serves the movie, not just what someone considers the best camera. There is no best camera, only the right camera. Number 17, a stopped heart can be restarted with a defibrillator. This has been a Hollywood trope for decades. If the hero's heart stops, pull out the good old shock machine and hit him on the chest and they're good as new. But in fact, this is not how they work. Where's the defibrillator? Clear! They cannot restart a heart after it stopped. The actual purpose is to detect irregular heart rhythms and shock them back to normal rhythms, not to restart an already stopped heart. Makes you question a lot of medical shows at this point, doesn't it? And number 18, you should always use rules of thirds. The rule of thirds is a compositional guideline that breaks an image down into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. So you have nine pieces and four grid lines. According to the rule, by positioning key elements along the grid lines, you'll end up with better compositions. It's probably one of the best known rules in photography and cinematography, but it's just that, a rule. And who doesn't like to break rules in art? The best advice is to get really good at filming with rules of third guidelines, and then when you have a firm grasp on it, experiment with breaking them. Remember that filmmaking is a visual medium and sometimes the unexpected or unnatural looking shot might help to sell the emotion of a point of a specific story. Never be afraid to break the rules. Number 19, Jared Leto didn't actually give Margot Robbie a dead rat. There is this rumor floating around that Jared Leto sent Margot Robbie a dead rat as a gift while playing the Joker on Suicide Squad. Somehow that story came about because someone actually did send her a rat in a box and people reported it as Jared Leto just acting as the Joker and sending it to her. That's not actually true. Number 20, a good lens is sharp. Looking sharp. I know many that would disagree, but a good lens has character and the right look for what you're filming. Just take a look at the Batman where they used an old beat up vintage Helios 44 anamorphic lens to give the film an old vintage feel. A lens just being sharp doesn't make it a good lens. Number 21, the MGM lion killed someone on set. There is an ancient rumor in the lifespan of cinema, that is, that the MGM lion, you know, this one, <laughs> killed his trainer and a pair of assistants around the time of filming the silent performance at that point. But as history shows us, his trainer, Balni Pfeiffer, actually outlived the lion himself and buried the lion on his estate in 1936. So no, the lion did not eat its trainer after making this trademark logo. In fact, he wasn't the only lion used for this as MGM used seven different lions over the years and none of them ate their trainers. Number 22, avoid shooting and bad lighting. There was a recent Twitter war going on about how the Godfather was terribly lit and it was a front to cinematography. They called it underlit and crap because you couldn't see the actor's face well and posted a little how to light this scene correctly tutorial after making this message on Twitter. But this is just a misunderstanding on how lighting 
actually works for movies. The DP actually worked very closely with the director on this movie to make sure that the characters almost lived in the dark as it very much matched the theme and overall feel of the Godfather movie. In fact, he bucked the trend of the brightly lit sets that were common in Hollywood at that time and actually had to fight off Paramount to make sure they didn't change this. Too many people think you need perfect lighting or a scene needs to be lit a certain way for it to be correct or the industry standard and you should avoid bad lighting at all times, but use the lighting that again works for the movie and adds to your story and is intentional as it can help to carry the message in a way that an accepted, well-lit scene might not. Now, again, don't just do something to do it. Make sure that anything you're doing adds to your story you're trying to tell, not just a gimmick like the Dutch angles in the first Thor movie. Number 23, a plane didn't actually make it into the Gladiator. Now, a lot of these myths can actually make a lot of sense because we've seen things like, you know, a Starbucks cup make it into Game of Thrones. But I'm sure many of you have seen this photo from the Gladiator where there's a plane in the background during a speech. Fairly famous photo that you'll see pop up through the internet from time to time, usually in some kind of clickbait thing. But if you actually go watch the scene in question, even on the early copies of this movie, you'll see that the editing team never actually missed a plane as it just ended up being an incredibly realistic Photoshop job. Well, that's a lot of myths, but we have one myth that we may have a chance at still being reality. The Red Digital Cinema 28K camera sensor, and you can watch that right here. 